Uh, thank you very much uh, for that uh, uh, kind introduction. Uh, very good morning to all of you. Uh, in fact, uh, it's a great pleasure and uh, honor for me to be with you at this uh, prominent event, IBEX India uh, 2021 conference. I would like to begin by thanking the organizers of this conference uh, for the invitation uh, extended to me to speak at this annual event as indicated uh, being held for the ninth instance this year, facilitating deliberations uh, on the most relevant challenges faced by the banking community. We are gathering today at a time when the world is going through severe hardships on many fronts, starting from the, the health sector uh, to the economic and financial sectors and many others due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This could easily be looked at as the worst time in the history for many generations to come. Uh, this could, uh, the, the, the pandemic has already laid claim to the life of uh, more than 2.5 million people around the globe uh, while putting more millions below the poverty line. So in this context, this conference is being conducted in this year on extremely timely theme of post-pandemic banking, uh, key drivers of digital transformation. I'm certain that the deliberations that will follow today will be immensely helpful for the banking community as well as the other stakeholders uh, to move forward the new or different normal uh, created by the pandemic. I'm also certain that eventually these deliberations will be helpful in some ways uh, to the people who have suffered immensely from this pandemic. The banking industry is uh, currently facing a plethora of challenges amidst this ongoing pandemic, as, as you know, emanating from the severe contraction of economic activity, increasing NPLs, uh, growing requirements by customers themselves, and sometimes loss of, loss, of, uh, loss of customer confidence, impact of lockdowns, inability to hold physical meetings, and the, the sometimes impact of uh, dead monitoring programs that you'll have given to name a few. However, the pandemic has also, as you already know, opened up uh, many opportunities in the banking sector. As people have started uh, thinking afresh on how to accomplish certain activities. In other words, the pandemic has literally forced them to do things differently. Hence, in this fast changing world, banks also need to improve their ability to adapt to the change. So the area that I'll be elaborating today is the opportunities in post-pandemic banking and how we should capitalize on them. As you know, the biggest opportunity that the banks could act upon in this instance is to digitalize the banking business. To capitalize on the opportunity, the regulatory system also has to be upgraded to facilitate novel digitalizing banking models. Uh, simultaneously, banks should recalibrate risk models to incorporate new risks emanating from technology and also facilitate customer protection. 
So in the remainder of my speech, I will discuss these points very briefly, as well as uh, some uh, technological developments that uh, we have observed recently in my country, that is Sri Lanka. So although banks were already in the process of embracing technology into banking operations with the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, the banking industry and regulators all over the world have focused on broad structural technological transformation. Thus, uh, the pandemic has been a blessing in disguise for the banking industry and regulators as well, who are reluctant to move into digitalized banking business models. In fact, uh, with the outbreak of the pandemic, many countries have given the green light to embrace more digitalization into banking business. Starting off with the online and mobile banking solutions that facilitate uh, banking operations with minimum human interaction, the banking industry is moving towards a fully digitalized model. Some regional regulators, such as the Hong Kong uh, Monetary Authority and the Monetary Authority of Singapore, has already started issuing licenses for digital banks. Issuing of such digital banking licenses would facilitate banking without any physical interactions. In the post-pandemic scenario, this is, con this is considered as a better fit to cater to customers. In the journey toward fully digitalized banking, regulators need to promote mass adoption of digital payments by reducing the costs incurred by customers for electronic payments. This mass adoption of low-cost electronic payments, such as QR code payments, will lead to the reduction of usage in physical currency. This, on the other hand, would reduce the costs incurred by governments in printing physical money. Moreover, by expanding and promoting uh, low-cost electronic payments, central bank could see the possibilities of adopting digital currencies, which would ultimately facilitate the complete digitalization of the financial system. On the other hand, the way towards digitalization also needs to be coupled with innovation and adoption of cost-effective fintech solution in place of traditional brick and mortar banking. It is not something that can be done only by the banking industry. Fintech companies will play a critical and crucial role in promoting ideas such as open banking, crowdfunding, and peer-to-peer -peer lending, which would best facilitate customer demands and ultimately lead to better financial inclusion and intermediation if done with adequate safeguards and consumer protection measures. New norms such as open banking, which provide third-party financial service providers open access to consumer banking through application interfaces, will be another extension to the banking system. High level of third-party involvement will be used to promote banking sector inclusion and better assessment of the financial position of customers through greater connectivity. This will facilitate easy financing of customers and hassle-free transferring of customer funds and credit facilities between banks as well. For many years, 
Adopting uh, blockchain technology into the banking system has been widely discussed. This pandemic situation can be considered as an ideal time to deploy such solutions through which trustworthiness of multi-party transactions such as trade finance can be improved. Through this adoption, physical moments of documents as well as human errors can be reduced and therefore will be a cost effective method for the banking industry as well. All these new adoptions would benefit banks uh, in increasing their competitive advantage and definitely produce a cost saving compared to brick and mortar banking model. Even though there will be a higher initial investment in deploying new technologies into the banking system, there will be a reduction in the recurring costs incurred for staff and building maintenance and fixed costs involved in establishing physical locations of the bank. Uh, at the same time, uh, constantly monitoring the uh, changing customer behavior and innovating new ways to adapt the products and create new ones according to the rising expectations will also be helpful in ensuring successful success of uh, digital banking uh, businesses. So given the fact that these uh, post pandemic opportunities come with a higher level of uh, technological involvement, the ways of uh, capitalizing on them should also be considered. It is essential to revise the regulatory scope in order to reap the benefits of new opportunities. Uh, new regulations uh, should be brought, brought in while removing obstacles once. However, uh, regulators uh, need to be mindful not to compromise the objectives of regulations. For example, when introducing a new digital banking model, both Hong Kong and Singapore I've been cautious not to undermine the initial objectives of the regulatory framework while facilitating the new business model. Moreover, uh, new regulatory models to cover fintech, blockchain technology, and open banking need to be carefully drafted as technology is something that can be harmful to the industry unless it is monitored and deployed properly. Further, uh, innovations in this direction need to be facilitated through methods such as uh, regulatory sandboxes and actions need to be taken to improve the cyber resilience of the banking system. FinTech and other third party service providers. On the other hand, as I mentioned earlier, central banks will also have to uh, look into ways of issuing and managing digital currencies, such as what the Central Bank of China is doing right now, which would be an integral, integral part of full banking digitalization. As we all know, uh, new technology brings in new risks. So banks need to recalibrate new risks stemming from new technological transformation to ensure that they are protected from the potential technological threats and to ensure regulatory compliance. So while doing all of this, Ensuring customer confidence 
in the new business models is of paramount importance. Therefore, implementing effective consumer protection regulations and maintaining safety net arrangements such as deposit insurance schemes are also vital. It is also critical that banks enhance their operational resilience to withstand disruptions to operations such as what were witnessed during the extraordinary circumstances arising from the pandemic. Therefore, it is imperative that banks make use of this pandemic to further strengthen their recovery plans and business continuity plans so that banks can enhance their crisis preparedness and their ability to maintain operational continuity under different pandemic scenarios and require improvements to recovery plans and business continuity plans where appropriate. With that, let us now turn briefly to the Sri Lankan context, as I indicated at the very beginning of my uh, remarks. In fact, uh, the pandemic provided a major opportunity to expand e-banking in the Sri Lankan economy. We are fortunate that we had the necessary infrastructure and regulatory frameworks that enabled a swift response. Communication is also very important to make the general public aware of the importance of using new technology. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka had earmarked 2020 as the year of digital transactions and conducted a series of promotional programs for e-payments which were extremely helpful to transmit the message on digital banking to the public. At this point, I would like to summarize uh, recent technological advancements in payment systems in Sri Lanka. Introducing common electronic fund transfer switch, that is FIFTS, in 2015, was a key juncture in transforming banking and payments in Sri Lanka, as uh, SWIFTS enables the versatility needed for digital innovation. SWIFTS provides retail fund transfer facilities to customers of banks and non-bank financial institutions through payment channels such as internet banking, mobile banking, kiosks, over-the-counter, and automated teller machines, that's ATMs. During 2020, in which we experienced the brunt of the pandemic, we saw a 90% increase in both volume and value of transactions processed through SWIFTS. To increase convenience and reduce the cost of paying with mobile apps, a national QR code named Lanka QR was introduced in 2019. The Lanka QR code enables customers to directly make a payment from their bank accounts by simply scanning a Lanka QR code displayed at a merchant, which is directly connected to the SAFETS network. Presently, all commercial banks, many financial institutions, and all mobile money operators have Lanka QR enabled apps. So following the pandemic, we have seen a substantial growth in Lanka QR transactions. Meanwhile, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka launched the FinTech regulatory sandbox in February 2020. The sandbox aimed to provide a live environment for a limited time for the FinTechs to operate before scaling to mass market level. Also, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka is currently completing a POC of a blockchain-based shared KYC facilitation in collaboration with local and foreign software companies and commercial banks operating in Sri Lanka. Having an advanced digital infrastructure in Sri Lanka, especially a real-time retail payment system, helped many Sri Lankans immensely during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
we were able to confidently encourage people to use cashless payments as we had developed multiple payment channels to cater to all requirements. On a separate note, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka is currently in the process of introducing a new data, data collecting, collecting system called the International Transactions Reporting System, that is ITRS. We have recognized the need to implement a comprehensive cross-border transaction and foreign currency transaction monitoring system to the banking sector. So this will ensure the availability of timely data on inflows and outflows at a granular level. ITRS is expected to facilitate an effective data reporting framework for regulatory supervision, more comprehensive compilation of external sector statistics, as well as effective macroeconomic policy formulation. So with this, now I would like to conclude my remarks. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought about many hardships in our lives. However, as the old saying goes, every dark cloud has a silver lining. The opportunities that the pandemic has unveiled are vast. For the banking sector, transformation of banks' business models to digitalization is an opportunity that every banker should capitalize on. However, we must also keep in mind that bank regulations should also be upgraded to facilitate novel digitalized banking models. At the same time, the banks should recalibrate the risk models to incorporate new risks originating from the introduction of new technology and also facilitate customer protection to reap the real benefits of digitalization. On that note, I will wind up my brief remarks and wish you all the best for your conference deliberations as well as your endeavors on banking business in the future. Thank you very much.